Of course, the location of filming is very much defining your film in many uh, layers and aspects and so, but perhaps first to talk about the time of the film. How come that you decided to make a history film? Perhaps because 100 years ago, the world was still big and uh, your name was still a secret or... I like this thing. Uh, thank you for staying, by the way. Um, so I have to go a step before it, uh, meaning that uh, these uh, pilgrimages were real. So it's not a legend uh, where the idea comes from, but it's from real pilgrimages that used to happen all over the arcs of the Alps, mm -hmm. starting from the 16th century. And uh, we have documents about uh, the um, breathing centuries uh, all over France, especially, and Austria and uh, Italy as well. And in my region, so Friuli Venezia Giulia, there were three of them, and one is still existing, even though it lost its original purpose because limbo doesn't exist anymore since 2007. The Pope decided so, so it's a good news. Yeah, I don't want to make fun of it, but in a way it's a good news. <laughs> so, um, so yes, the first question it was where to settle the story. And um, even though it's not written anywhere, it's set it in 1901 mm -hmm. because I like the number. And uh, there is this famous song by Phoenix, who is a French band. Uh, and the name of this song is 1901. So I like the number and I want you to settle there. But the reason was because uh, mm, 19, there are two like analytic reasons, let's say. So 1901 was the year where uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire started to electrify, electrify, yeah, to put electricity, uh -huh, yeah, yeah. Uh, all around the country. So also in Friuli Venezia Giulia, which used to belong to Austria Empire, and um, and also Freud started to share his uh, studies. So in a way, symbolically speaking, of course, because Agatha doesn't give a shit about uh, psychoanalysis, of course, uh, so it doesn't reach her already. But in a way, it's the year where when uh, um, you start to have more options, not only religion, but you start to have psychoanalysis as another tool to face mourning. I'm not saying that psychoanalysis is better than religion. I'm saying that it's better to have two options rather than one. So this was the reason why. And the electricity also as an option to... Yeah, of course, science, yeah. Uh, so to talk about the place where the film takes place, it's uh, uh, it's actually a road movie, mm -hmm. we could say, and, uh, and walking road movie, and it takes from the sea to the Alps, and so it's breathtaking, but also um, scary in a way, and very raw. The nature is um, the master there. Um, did you choose it because you also come from this region or uh, you studied here or what was your... No, it was never an option to think to another place, mm -hmm. to be honest. So um, while I was developing at the very early stage of the process, uh, so I think it was 2016, and I haven't met yet Nadia Trevisan, who is the Italian producer, I was having uh, interviews with other Italian producers and they were proposing me to shoot it in Roma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, no. So th yeah, this was never an option to shoot somewhere else. Uh, yes, nature is definitely one of the main characters in a way of the film. I think because, yes, I've, I, I come from Trieste. That's the region where I come from. And we both have the sea and the mountains and the flatland as well. But I think that, um, so despite the, the pure necessity of shooting there because I wanted to go back home in a way, um, I think I like the fact of having like an ascension, like a physical, does it make sense in English, ascension? Yes, going from a low situation to an higher one, mm -hmm. physically speaking, while both Agatha and Lynch were going in the other way around. So they're like um, thinking in a way. So it creates like a chiasmo. So outside, like the external movement is going up uh, and the internal movement is going down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, maybe it's a bit too much uh, like internal in me, but it makes sense. Yeah. Um, then probably, uh, as you said, you were researching, and this is a true, true story, true happen stories that. Um, but your research also then focused very much on the people in the region and on their history. And you put it a, a lot of it in the film also, probably with the songs and what they do, what, what they do, but the um, miners and so. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's an historical drama, so of course we did some researches, but we didn't get crazy about it uh, because after a while, I mean, you could just do a reconstruction about the historical time and that's it, but this was not the purpose. I wanted to have um, a fairy tale, like a Grimm Brothers uh, story in a way. So uh, egoistically speaking, we took what we liked uh, and we forget what we didn't need uh, in a way. Um, yeah, talking about the people, most of them, despite from uh, Ivo Ban, who I think you recognize maybe, even though he wears a beard, uh, and uh, Lynche, so Ondina Quadri, who were already experienced, well experienced in the case of Ivo. All the others were new to the set, uh, but uh, I chose them mostly because of the dialect. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted people to feel comfortable in the language they were speaking and especially in the um, jobs they were doing. So the fishermen are fishermen in real life. So, so we casted people, we spent like weeks sitting in the harbor waiting for fishermen to come back and we were uh, stalking them in a way. <laughs> yeah. And also some of the miner, one of the miners uh, was a real miner uh, before retirement. Um, so in a way, I wanted to honor their roots, uh, and they were really happy to do that because it's like a way to reconnect to, to your past, but also to get rid of it uh, mm -hmm. after you face it. You know, you're like, okay, this it's this is what my grandfather used to do. Okay, and then you can move forward in a way. But talking about the dialect, is it dialects actually? Be yeah, not everything. So as you as you heard, uh, there is also a Slovenian moment. Yes, there are at least three different dialects. Uh, it's a political matter to me, meaning that uh, um, Italian, it's an invention. So uh, after the unification of the country in 1861, politicians decided that we needed a common language, which makes sense in a way. So uh, Italian was created. And during fascism, it was mandatory to speak Italian and especially in the region where I come from, it was really violent, the obligation of speaking Italian. So all the dialects were forbidden, especially the ones that, has, that had uh, Eastern influences. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about Nedishka Doline, I'm talking about Terezia, I'm talking about uh, Collio, all the parts, so all the parts that are on the border with the actual Slovenia. And this is something that also my family experienced uh, as a trauma. So um, everything is politic at a certain point, you know what I mean? So um, talking about an, an historical film, uh, it's believable that nobody would speak in Italian, but they would speak in dialect. Uh, and we have Agatha and all the people in the island uh, which speak uh, a dialect which has Slo um, Venetian influences, Veneto. Then we have Friulano, in the farm, for example, the bandits. And Lynche speaks Carnico, which has also German influences. And then, yeah, we have the Slovenian moment. Uh, even though the, like the previous idea was Nedishko, but then I met Ivo and I was like, okay, let's skip to Slovenian. It makes sense <laughs> in any case. So it's a border situation and it's a melting pot region. So it totally made sense. But for me, it was political because uh, people felt ashamed for a lot of time about the dialect uh, all over Italy. I'm talking also about the southern part because if you speak dialect, it's like you're not culturated mm -hmm. in a way. You have to speak in proper Italian. And uh, in the border regions, so I'm talking also about the places that, are, that face France, for example, 
or Austria, it was forbidden. And if you lose your identity, which belongs to language, it's like you're carrying your family, even though you're not physically with them. I mean, it's a tragedy. You're losing something and uh, I don't like it. <laughs> so yeah, I wanted to go back there in a way. And then it was also a natural thing to do a Slovenian co-production. I saw also uh, Alberto Fasulo on the, uh, we know him very well. He was also here with Tir, his film, uh, but also Daniel. Uh, so, and also the crew being Italian and Slovenian, did it work out? Yeah, well? of course. No, uh, I have to clarify it. Uh, Daniel didn't oblige me to shoot in Slovenian. <laughs> no, he didn't. Uh, yeah, it totally worked. Uh, but uh, Daniel was one of the first reader of the script ever, I think. Not even the script, but the treatment. So something that belonged to an early stage. And uh, you already worked with Nadia, I think. You already, no, never. It Was it the first time? OK. I said stupid things in the interviews then. OK, now I know. OK, I said, yes, they already knew each other. Well, anyway. You know, okay, it was the first time then. Happy to know that now, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, he came into the project from a very early stage. Uh, and uh, this is for sure that you awarded us with a prize uh, and you were not on board. And then you came on board. This is, I know for sure. So he liked the project. Um, yeah, it totally worked out. Uh, I mean, it was a set where we were mostly speaking Italian because like, uh, statistically speaking, we were mostly Italians, uh, but we had a huge part of it, uh, huge meaning that they were really important. So it was all the camera department, which was Slovenian, headed by Mitya. And uh, so we were speaking Italian and then English, and then we had the French part of the effects, uh, let's say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say for such a close, um comrade in a filmmaking, like a director of photography, that you need some cultural angle that is common, or that, that you need some, you know, the common, something that is common for your, I don't know, state of mind or... Yes, but this is something that doesn't belong to the culture. I think it belongs to um, how open you are to the others and uh, how you bond. So. Of course, you have technically to speak technically about some references, otherwise you get lost uh, in between. We were talking this afternoon about the fact that uh, I'm not really good in giving references to the collaborators uh, because the things to me happens when we shoot, uh, which is not the greatest idea. Um, <laughs> but Mitya is really much more prepared than I am, luckily. So we were spending uh, several moments together uh, with him drawing in the sand at the beginning and in the snow, maybe later. I don't know what we did in the flatland because there was no sand, no snow, but concrete. But like drawing things like the movements of the cameras, of the camera, it was one. Yeah. Much of the film is hand handheld all camera. Of it, uh, yeah, yeah, all of it, I think. Yeah, everything that we edited, yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, where I thought maybe it's not when there is a shot under the horses. I said, maybe this is no, not a still hand it is. Yes, he is seated on a, a truck, but uh, he's, it's still handheld, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how did you come to this um, decision? Not to put the camera. I say my version, you say yours. Uh, let's, let's compare them. Um, it was from the very beginning. We wanted to feel the, the pain and the steepness of the ground uh, and the uh, sweat and whatever, with them. So we decided to walk with them. And we had few rules, actually, like following them, anticipating them. We were working with really long takes, uh, knowing that maybe they would have been cut later on in the editing process. Uh, but yeah, like at the beginning, we had, uh, yeah, I have to say something, which is, um, we didn't shoot uh, the way we wanted uh, in the, like, the best option because there was the pandemic. So we started and 10 days later uh, there was the Italian lockdown. So we got stopped for eight months. And then we started, I mean, 
worst things happened in our life because of the pandemic, but talking about the film, this is what's the worst thing that happened. So we stopped for eight months and then we went on and off further three times. So the workflow was more similar to a TV series rather than a film. To shoot five weeks, it took one year. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gave us the time and the option to rethink things in a way. We shot in continuity, so we started with the very first scene. The very first scene that you see, it's the first thing that we shot. And uh, we were so relaxed <laughs> and so lucky to take one day to shoot it. So we rehearse, so we decide everything, and then it's one take. One really long take that covers everything. Mm -hmm. And then when we came, we, we came back on the second season, let's call it like it's a TV series, uh, at least I'm talking about myself, I was more in, in a hurry because we didn't know if we could end the day or if we had too many infections or I don't know what. So we started covering the scenes, which technically means that you just don't um, relay, relay everything on one take, mm -hmm. but you try different angles because just in case uh, you're not satisfied with that. So we, we went quicker than, did I say it correctly? Thank you. But the shooting continuity was decision before? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. And it's not really common because usually the producers, uh, it makes sense, they don't allow it because it's more expensive. So if you have to shoot uh, like uh, one interior in the kitchen, uh, in the morning and then one interior in the kitchen in the night, you do it in the same, in the very same day. We were moving constantly going north. So we did uh, the very same journey of the characters. And so it made sense to shoot in the same order of it. And it allowed uh, the characters, so the actresses, uh, to grow with the characters and us to rethink to things that we were maybe under evaluating or uh, not experiencing enough in a way. So it was a big luck. Mogo če kakšno vprašanje iz publike? Pa kakšno mnenje? Also to the producer and uh, the DP if you want. Yeah, yeah. Se nismo te vprašali, če imaš svojo verzijo, zakaj ste iz roke snemali? A ja. The microphone, that this should slice you I still want to talk about, uh, how, how did you work with the actors? Because you said, yeah, you had professional, but most of the, of the people meeting were non-professionals. Did you meet them many times? What did you talk to, what was your, way of uh, yeah um no most like all of them despite from ivo and uh, ondina quadri who plays lince are uh, debutants uh -huh. it was their first time in front of a camera and uh yeah they i don't like to say they got chosen because it's like they're cows and they're not cows i i like to think that i gave them freedom to escape this situation if they wanted um they were somehow connected to the story because of what they do for a living. So let's say that the location scouting and the street casting were connected, mm -hmm. meaning that uh, I was uh, going around the region for one year with uh, one assistant uh, and uh, we were really like entering pubs uh, and bars, uh, asking for indications, let's say for the cave and maybe it was like 11 a.m. and we were entering in this really small village uh, yeah, in the morning in a bar and of course there were old old men playing cards already drunk. So I'm not good in cards but I'm good in drink. So <laughs> we started talking and I was asking them like, do you know about a cave? We've been hearing about a cave and they were driving us there, like situations like this. And then some of them became extras in the film, but they were really like living 200 meters from the cave or they were like real fisher, they are real fishermen in life and they were playing fishermen in the film. 
So I think the most difficult thing about uh, working with them was uh, making them understand that the camera is not a gun. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you ever did uh, something like an extra or if you ever played in a film, but it's not really nice. I mean, you froze, you're like, like this. And uh, even though, I mean, we're a nice person, Mita is a really nice person and yeah, we shoot, but not in that sense, you know? So, <laughs> so sometimes it was like working with, I don't know if it makes sense in English, but it was like working with Chinese boxes like with the matrioska. Mm -hmm. So, okay, you are a real fisherman, right? Uh, then there is the camera. Uh, and then remembering them that they know how to do things with the nets because they do it every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was working like this. So, so this is a paradox because we had to do a big work with um, also with a, an actor trainer, actor, what's the name? Uh, coach thank you an actor coach uh, acting coach uh, with like playing with them to go back to the nets mm -hmm. things that they do every day but it's okay it's okay <laughs> yeah. um, and the two main protagonists how do you how did you because they are somewhere also in the limbo between reality and this fairy tale world and and it's you know there is psychology but there is not you know and how how did you talk how did you, what did you talk about to put them in their place in the film? Well, things that I cannot say because they're private, but also, um, no, but I can explain the process. So um, I'm protected because I am behind the camera. So in Italian we say regista, but in almost all, all, all of the other languages you say director or something that sounds similar because we direct the paths of other people but we're protected we're behind everything we're like like this so i totally respect who is in front of it and who exposes him slash herself in front of this gun and to do so i mean you it's like in relationships you don't ask for trust you give trust and then you hope to receive it back so working with celeste who plays agatha and dondina who plays lynche but with all of them because there is no uh, hierarchy in the thing it's like they're all in front of the camera um i talked to them about uh, what i was scary about uh, in my role or what I was doubtful about uh, the scene, for example, because I think that, um, I mean, crafting a film is uh, a community situation. Otherwise I would do um, water painting alone uh, in a field, which I would be terrible in. So according to the fact that you're working with a lot of people, Yes, you are the keeper of the holy secret of the film because you sleep with it for five years. Mm -hmm. Five years, guys, five years. But in some parts of it, in, in the process, uh, like for some months you are with Mitya, for some months we're with someone else and so on, uh, with the editor, blah, blah, blah. So you're never properly alone. But to create this community, it's important to remember that the most exposed people are the one in front of the camera. So we talk a lot, but about life, not about the film, because all of it is a metaphor. Mm -hmm. I mean, I never ask them to experience uh, the miscarriage of a baby or whatever, or to shoot to someone for real. But it's like um, creating an arena, creating an arena of um, of metaphor. Yeah in order to talk about uh, what is real in life. I don't know, does it make sense? Because maybe I went too far for, oh, yeah, okay. Mogoče še kakšno vprašanje iz publike? Prosim. It reminds me of, you know, the Ah, Swarm Virgin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I, I understand what you say is not inspired by it. Uh, there is also a film that talks about it, uh, an Italian film, uh, which is uh, Suore and Virgin, I think it's the name. Si, de la Bispurice. Yeah, it makes sense. But, uh, well, Lynch's character is, it, it has a long story. So at the beginning of the idea, there was no Lynch. Agatha was traveling alone, and it was really boring, to be honest with you. She was doing everything that you saw alone, yeah. So this is why we decided to create uh, Lynch. But Lynch was not Lynch. Lynch was a, a she, a declared she. She had a female name, and she was just dressed up as a boy. That was the original idea, because we did some researches, some historical researches, and we found out that, uh, but it makes sense in a way, that if you were a woman at the time and you wanted to survive and to do whatever you wanted, uh, you had to be a boy. So this was easy. But then, uh, mm, I mean, we're sponges as human beings, uh, and uh, I didn't write alone this project. Uh, it was three of us, so me, Elisa Dondi, and Marco Borromei. And yeah, we're sponges, but we're also political animals. And a lot of things happened in the last five years. And uh, just to give you an example, in Italy in the last summer, we struggled and we fight it, not me personally, like in, at the parliament, but uh, as political animals, uh, we wished and we asked for a, a right uh, law that uh, condemns uh, homophobic uh, crimes in Italy. We didn't succeed in that. Uh, so still, if you're a lesbian or a gay guy down the street or whatever, trans and so on, and you get beaten down the street, uh, it's, uh, mm, I don't know how to translate it. Uh, it's uh, crime aggression with no reason, no apparent reason, which is insane. So we don't have it. All of these things, uh, we absorb it uh, as human beings uh, and in a way, but this is something that I can tell you today. I didn't register it in my brain at the time. So it's like a relector of what happened. We understood that uh, nothing changed in one century. So we see someone that it's a non-binary character. So it's biologically speaking a she, but uh, she behaves as a he and she is dressed up as a he, but they chose the name, which is an animal name, so it's a them, the sum of it is a them, who is uh, rejected by the family, and one century later, we're still there, and I don't like it. So it was not the decision at the beginning, it was historical research and all the development, uh, but now it's 2022, yeah, 22, yeah, and it's still like this, yeah. And I don't like it, again, yeah. <laughs> Aha, yes, I know, Prashanya. It's just, it's not a question. It's um, congratulations Thank you. to, I just wanted to, um, but somebody uh, uh, beat me to it, just to lift the curtain or something. It was beautiful. Thank you. It was really beautiful. And thank God for Lice. Lice? It's Lice. Lice? Sorry. Riz. <laughs> It's a beautiful character and it made the fairy tale. Just this character, I don't know why, it made the fairy tale came true. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry that Ondina is not here, but um, I will tell her. She will be really happy about it. Thank you. I was thinking to ask, you know, uh, um, because there are many things that communicate with uh, with uh, now, with modernity, but then I realized actually, yeah, not much has changed in 100 years. Yeah, yeah. But also because you take, for characters, you take like, um, I don't know how to say it actually, but you take a, a miner, a gypsy, a thief, a tabundum, you know, so the people are, at the same time, they are, private, but they're more like in this game fairy tale of, of films. So it's very interesting film, thanks. <laughs> uh, did it already play in Italy? How? No. Ah, yeah. 
Thank you for saying that because I, I wanted, I didn't know how to introduce this topic, but um, this is the very first theatrical release uh, in the world. Uh -huh, okay. So thank you to Daniel and uh, to Zala because it's uh, like before Italy, so. <laughs> yeah, so this is the very first night of the film uh, in a cinema theater. Yeah, yeah, not in a festival. But festivals, yeah, yeah. there were many festivals yes, because there, there are quite some prizes already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> congratulations Thank for you. this. And uh, did people on different parts of Europe and world react differently to the film or? Mm -mm. Uh, Yes, maybe, but uh, the thing that I prefer to look to the um, similar things rather than to the differences. So there will be differences, but I didn't notice them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that uh, all over the places I've been introducing it, uh, there was this necessity of sharing uh, also personal things about uh, miscarriage sometimes uh, which is one of the elements of the film but is not uh, the theme in my opinion uh, and i'm not even prepared to help the people in this situation but um, yeah there were a lot of sh of personal sharing about uh, different topics also about the gender fluidity for example and this is what the q a session is made for i mean it's not a, like therapy session otherwise we should ask each other 70 euros i don't know what about slovenia but in italy it's 70 euros each session it's each session um but yeah i mean the reason why at least i do films uh, is to feel less alone in being obsessed with uh, stories yeah so i got obsessed with it and i wanted to talk about it uh, and the way i found it it was to <laughs> to do a film which is like it was better to talk at the bar, maybe, like it was quicker. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, no yeah. Corona, so yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. So, no, there was there was a lot of sharing of personal things and, um, yeah. Maybe a question, Mugoche Shikoshno Prashani, is public? Okay, then we say... Thank you very Thank much you. for the talk and the film, and all the best. Thank you so much. Um, maybe we can say when, when it's going to be screened the next day in the other places. Aha. Ne, film na mreč začenja distribucijo nocoj, pa mogoče, če bi dane povedal, da komu please. priporočite, bo zelo dober. Uh, pač zdaj bo igral v kino dvoru, to sigurno. Aha. Ja, film bo um, v petek igral v Sežani, 28 ga v uh, Tolminu z zelo zanimivo predstavitev, tudi z gostjo Manca Račič, ki je v tej dvorani. Um, film bo tudi v Art Kino Delno v Izoli, uh, Črnomlju, Radovelci in v vseh ostalih kinih. Tako da, če vam je bil všeč, povejte naprej. Hvala. Hvala. Thank you very much. It's a road road trip with the road moving. Yes.